Well, good evening and welcome to Night Prayer on this Thursday, the 4th of February 2021. Welcome to you from St Andrew's Church, Horton Esquern. It's good to be able to share with you tonight. And hopefully uh, you'll have seen the posted post previously um, on our uh, web page, on our Facebook page with the readings. But in case you need them, we're looking first of all at Psalm 48 verses 1 to 7. Uh, then we're also going to be reading from Hebrews chapter 12 verses 18 to 24. And finally, we're going to look at... Um, Mark chapter 6 verses 7 to 13. So hopefully you have those in front of you or what you will do shortly. And we're also going to be using the the night prayer for night prayer um, from the Church of England, which again is a link for that um, on the post that I put up earlier on. So as we come together tonight um, at the end of this day, um, Perhaps we can just bring all our thoughts and all that we have done to God today and we can ask him to be with us just in a moment of quietness. So Father God, we thank you that you've given us this day all that we've been able to do. We pray Lord you bless us in our time together now in Jesus name. Amen. And some encouraging words from Deuteronomy chapter 33. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. So continuing in the service sheet. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Just a quiet time now to reflect on this past day, to bring it all to God, the good and the not so good, the joyful and the perhaps painful. We just bring it to God and we lay it in his hands. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. So if you can find Psalm 48 in your Bibles, we're going to read that. I'll read it from the NIV version. Uh, it's verses 4, sorry, one, 1 to 3, and then 8 to 10. So the psalmist says, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise in the city of our God, his holy mountain. Beautiful in its loftiness, the joy of the whole earth. Like the heights of Zaphon is Mount Zion, the city of the great king. God is in her citadels. He has shown himself to be her fortress. And then we go down to verse 8 from the psalm. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord Almighty, in the city of our God, God makes her secure forever. Within your temple, O God, we meditate on your unfailing love. Like your name, O God, you pray, your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. And we say the Gloria together. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And on this Thursday evening, a sentence of scripture which uh, we're asked to, to use in uh, night prayer. This is from John 16, verses, verse 33. Jesus said, as I have said this to you, so that in me you may be, you may have peace. In the world you have persecute, you face persecution, but take courage, I have conquered the world. And that leads us nicely into our second reading, which is from Hebrews chapter 12. And we're reading uh, verses 18 through to verse 24. And the, the, imagery in in this reading from Hebrews um, goes right back to um, much of what happened with the 
with the Exodus or after the Exodus when the people of Israel were, were journeying through the wilderness. And um, uh, do you remember that time when Moses went up to the mountain to receive the um, tablets of stone which, which had the Ten Commandments written on them and they were told not to go near the mountain. Um, and there were all sorts of things that happened um, around that time, which we won't go into now, but this is sort of leading them back towards that as a reminder of the difference between the God that um, they were in fear of and the God who comes close to them through Jesus. It's the same God, but there's a different outlook towards him. So verses 18 through to verse 24. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom and storm, to a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. But you've come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. And this is a reminder, isn't it, that the way in which what Jesus has done for us has enabled us mm -hmm. to come into God's presence, not fearful like they were at the foot of the mountain, but to come into God's presence because of what he has done to enable us to stand in his presence and to rejoice. So I pray that can be an encouragement for us, that we have a God who is awesome and majestic, majestic the creator of the, of the heavens and the earth, but a God who through Jesus enables us to draw close to him without fear. Let's turn now to our third reading, which is from Mark chapter 6. And this is um, a time during Jesus' ministry on earth when he was uh, encouraging his 12 disciples. And this is the part in the, in, in, in the Gospels where he sends them out to begin his work, uh, I suppose to prepare them for when he was going to leave them. And it's because of that and because of the example and the way in which their example was passed down through the, through the ages that the church still is called to go out and to minister in his name. And that's what we're called as a church to do. And that's one of the encouragements for us as a church to, to go and spread the good news, to do the things that God calls us to do. So Mark chapter 6 and verses 6 through to... 13, sorry, 7 through to 13. So just the lead into to verse 7. Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Then calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Take a, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if a place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave the place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony, testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. This is the word of the Lord. One of the things we're thinking about on Sunday is at the beginning of Jesus' ministry um, when he performed that miracle in Cana at the wedding. And um, one of the things that we'll be hearing in that is the ways in which God calls us, like those servants who did as he told them to fill the water jars, that uh, we're called also to 
to be encouraged to do as Jesus calls us. And maybe Jesus is calling us, well not maybe, Jesus is calling us to proclaim the good news and to go out and uh, preach to others. That doesn't mean standing on a soapbox on the corner of the street, but it means through our words and our actions, telling of the good things that Jesus has done for us. And that can also mean that we pray for people to be healed. It could also mean that we are encouraged to to um, perform miracles in Jesus' name. It could mean that we're called to declare the goodness of God to those around us. And that's what has been done for us if we call ourselves followers of Jesus. We've in some way been told and convinced and encouraged to follow in his footsteps. And we're called also to do the same. And it's not just those of us like myself who wear plastic around the neck, a dog collar, but it's for the all, all the church, just like Jesus sent out the 12 and he sent out the 72. We're all called to do the things that God calls us to do, to bring his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So my prayer and my, my, my encouragement to us all is to seek to be obedient to all that Jesus asks of us. With that in mind, let's turn now to prayer. I wonder if tonight, this morning, uh, this evening, we could also pray particularly for Diane Bousfield and her mother, who's uh, not well at the moment. And also if we could bring to mind those others that we're aware of that need to, uh, need to have God's wholeness and healing in their lives. So Father God, we do come before you tonight. We thank you for the words of encouragement from our Bible readings. Thank you that we can draw near to God with a confidence and with a sincere heart because of what Jesus has done for us. And thank you that he calls us to minister in his name. We pray, Lord, that you would enable us to be channels to which your love, grace and healing can flow. Help us to step out in faith with you Help us to be men and women, young and old, who are prepared to be obedient to the voice of Jesus, the call upon our lives to take action in his name. Help us to be able, like those um, who have gone before, before us, to spread the good news of Jesus and to demonstrate that through the miracles and the wholeness and healing that he brings for his glory. And Lord, help us to remember that it isn't we that do this, but it's your power that works in and through us. And this we ask in Jesus' name. And some of the prayers for tonight. Merciful God, we entrust your unfailing and tender care this night. Those who are ill or in pain, we hold before you particularly Diane's mother, we pray also for others that we're aware of in our own networks, through our own church, who need God's wholeness and healing. Pray particularly for people that we know. Pray for Jay and for Gillian. Pray also for Gillian's sister and her father. And I also ask us to pray for others um, in our deanery who go through difficult times, remembering our fellow Christians in the other Anglican churches and the other churches across our town and all their leaders. We thank you, Father, that you listen to our prayers and we pray that wherever danger threatens your everlasting arms may be there to hold us safe comfort and heal all those who need your wholeness in their lives and restore them to health and strength through jesus christ our lord amen be present O merciful god and protect us through the silent hours of this night so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
and I pray for ourselves in our homes and within our families and those we're concerned for. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us in peace, and may your blessing be always upon us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And please join with me in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Isn't that a wonderful promise? So now may God be with you this night as you come to the end of this day, as you rest in, in your beds, as you seek God's refreshment. And may the Lord bless us and watch over us. May he make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. And may the Lord look kindly upon us and give us his peace. Amen. So bless you all, and may you know God's strength and his wholeness, and may you be in, uh, refreshed and encouraged and able to serve him in the way he calls you, both tomorrow and in the days ahead. Thank you for joining me tonight, and do please join us again um, each evening at 7pm. And then again, if you can join us on Sunday morning, that would be great. So God bless you all and may you rest in God's strength and know his wholeness and know his encouragement to you. Amen.